Thank you for staying with us. Well, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, where we're dishing out different topics that are happening in Nigeria and around the globe. Right now, it's time for a hot topic, and we're talking about um, the over 500 workers that have left Nigerian hosp National Hospital in two years, and this was being said by the CMD. Well, our guest today to, you know, just give us more insight on this is Dr. Shea Bolorunduro. He's an interventional cardiologist in Nova Heart and Vascular Institute, Virginia, USA. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. I hope I got your surname right. I'm not Yoruba, but I hope I, I tried yes, it. it oh, All fantastic. Yes. yes, you got it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the brain drain in Nigeria right now. I mean, you are on the other side, you're overseas, and I'm sure you're living your best life there. But Nigeria has this brain drain where almost everybody, um, the goal, the, the Nigerian dream is to move abroad, is to move away from this whole system. And we're seeing this happening time and time again almost every day you go to the airport it's filled with so many people and these are people who are doctors medical practitioners um tech bros you know people that are supposed to be here to help you know push this nation forward and bring all of their ideas and you know just implement good 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 things that could just help nigeria really but we're seeing them move away and now there's a report that over 500 people have moved in two years. So what is your take on all of this before we start to dive right in? Yeah, um, brain drain is a complex process. It's, <laughs> it's a complex process. And then you said I'm in Nigeria. You said you that I was in the U.S. Well, I am in the U.S. most of the time. Okay. Uh, my work in the U.S. But um, uh, we do a medical mission and education program where we come to Nigeria frequently. So okay. I'm currently in Nigeria. Oh, right nice, nice, nice. You're, yeah. you're touching so, base. What are you saying? You're touching base every now and again. Yes, yes, yes. So mm. um, uh, the last time I was on this um, interview on the breakfast show, what we did was, this was September, we had a medical mission project that we do where we do interventional cardiology work on people's hearts in Nigeria. We do it in a number of locations, um, Lagos State University, um, in Abuja and some other centers in, in, in here where we come and then we just volunteer our time with oh, equipment wow. and everything to help work on people's hearts. That's so amazing. Um, I am here actually um, for the same process this um, this week. Okay. So the brain drain is not always a drain. Sometimes there might be some gain to it. <laughs> so, um, but to a large extent, it's brain drain, not good, you know. Yes, we might try to make some benefits out of it by trying to bring about some, you know, improvement in the health system we're left behind, you know. A few of us come back periodically or do processes trying to build our system to try to make the system um, more better altogether for our people. Um, but like you said, it's a very complex process. Um, and, and it's quite sad that, you know, I saw that newspaper article that was published talking about 500 workers leaving the National Hospital, um, one hospital in two years. Yeah. I hear of um, other hospitals facing a similar process. And then I have friends, you know, friends, colleagues, mentees, you know, who reach out and enter, uh, asking questions or just people generally who reach out on LinkedIn and other platforms trying to figure out what to do with their lives. And unfortunately, um, like it said, the Japa syndrome yeah. is, a, is a big deal. We're trying to get out of the country. Um, so it's very complex, but I guess we'll get to that. Okay. So, okay, I think let's start with the root cause of the matter. Because before we start to, you know, go up, let's just start with the root cause. Let's start with what the issue, the cocoa of the matter is. What is mm -hmm. the problem with Nigeria? We know there are quite a number of problems, but what is the major problem that is causing this brain drain? Because we're talking about one hospital, just one hospital, and over 500 people living in two years. Imagine if we start to collate the numbers of different hospitals, you know, in Nigeria, and even in Abuja alone, and then we go to Lagos, Port Harcourt, and all of these, you know, states, we would find out that the numbers are in thousands and, and hundreds of thousands and millions even. So what is the root cause of the matter that is making people just, you know, move away? 
you ask the question, what is the problem with Nigeria? That's a complex. <laughs> <laughs> like like I said, I, I know I know we have a lot, <laughs> but let's just talk about the fact that these medical practitioners are moving. Yes, and so it's a very complex process. Um, brain drain. So I have a master's degree in public health, and then one of the things that I did when I left Nigeria, um, fifteen what, um, two thousand and eight. So that's sixteen years ago. Mm. Um, was focused initially on public health, and the idea was to try to improve myself, improve the health system, improve the whole world, global health. And one of, and this is a concept that's been discussed extensively in, in public health: the push pull phenomenon. Mm. There's what's pushing you out of your country, and there's what's pulling you to other countries. Mm. And so, you know, it's a multifactorial process. You know, something pushes you out of Nigeria or whatever country you are, um, developing country, to go for greener pastures. But there's also a pull on the other side. Right. What's pulling you to other countries and towards the other countries? Um, Nigeria has a lot of push factors, and some of those push factors, like we know, is our healthcare system you know, not having adequate resources, um, you know, you get trained, um, you know, you want to be, um, you want to be this, you want to um, be somebody who does procedures on the heart. Um, as at the time I was finishing training, there was no place in the country that could give you that kind of resource to do procedures on the heart. So you would hear that it's possible, you would read it in the books, but you can't do it. <laughs> um, now, we've actually found processes, and so many of us who have that kind of mindset in mind, we're leaving the country to do that. That's part of what we're trying to change by coming in and do these programs in teaching hospitals to train the, um, the physicians on ground. That way, they could also train the next generation. So yes, there is that push of not having resources. There's a push of not being paid salaries. People are not, you know, people would like, you know, not being paid salaries, you know, losing their income. There's a devaluation of the Naira, so their purchasing power gets worse. Um, there are all those factors that basically make it such that in this day and time, you see what you don't have in Nigeria, but you also realize that in, um, you know, once you just get online, you could be on Instagram, you could be on LinkedIn, you see people succeeding elsewhere. So there is that pull from other countries where, okay, look, I could just do this exam and get out. And um, so that's, those are factors that are happening. And obviously we need to, um, from a policy perspective, um, look at what we're doing on ground, look at how we could improve the health system in Nigeria, how we could improve resources for the doctors, for the nurses, for the um, from as pharmacists, for other people in the system, such that they could do their work happily. They could have, you know, I mean, we as, um, as trainees in Nigeria, many times had to give our own blood. We would pay for patients' um, health care. We would give yeah. our own blood, you know, because there is no, patients can't afford it. People would die in your presence. You get frustrated because you know everything you can do that you have in your mind, that you even have in the pharmacy to give the person or in the blood bank, but they can't afford it, and then they die. Those frustrations lead to the overwhelming sense of, look, I can't do this anymore. I need to do something different. Mm. So it's a lot of things that we need to do. We may not be able to do as much for the pool factors where that's based on the international, the other or countries that are pulling um, Nigerian um, human capital away. But for the push factors, we have to try to do less to push our people away. And that, I would say, the first thing we could do is try to get um, health insurance, get health care available to everybody so that when you want to help somebody you're not frustrated because the resources you have even though they are right there beside you i can't give it to the child who's one year old that is dying in front of me mm. because i can't afford it and i can't afford to pay it because i spent all my money on the last patient so those <laughs> are some of the factors that come in yeah okay so i want to talk about the economic effect on you know nigeria for instance you say we have a lot of push factors we're sending people away and um obviously that's going to have an impact on our economy because if we're sending people away so the money that we're supposed to be making the revenue we don't have that anymore instead another country like you know the us or the uk or, or canada or any other country they are benefiting from these people that were pushing away and they are pulling them in. So what is the, um, what's the effect economically to us, Nigeria, um, or rather to our, to our own Nigerian economy um, in this state? Yeah, so definitely very important. Healthcare spending in Nigeria is Herculean. Um, we have the largest growing population in the world. 
And so our healthcare spending is never going to reduce. It's going to keep, you know, in terms of our growth of our population, over by 2050, we're going to be so, such a large population that we need to think about how healthcare expenses are going to multiply in that period. And what are we doing for those people? And how are we developing our capital infrastructure? Because when you think about it, like you have to, I am, I am astutely pointed out, you have people who all our, our human capital, a lot of our human capital is leaving the country. Yeah. Human being capital is essential, a huge part of any form of capital. It's not just financial capital. So you're losing all those finances to those countries. And then we're losing people who travel, oh, I need to get a procedure done. Well, I can't get it in Nigeria. So where do they go? They go to India. So you have Nigerian patients who would otherwise have gotten good healthcare delivery in Nigeria moving over to, and they were spending billions of dollars every year as a country on, on, um, on, on, the, on this, you know, sending people out of the country, people going out, losing um, things that could easily have been done locally. I mean, things are getting better in some perspective. We don't want to always focus on the negative. I yeah. mean, things are getting better in some perspective. There are some procedures that we're beginning to have because, like I said, you know, there are some physicians who are trying to come back to the country and help develop the infrastructure we have here. So, yes, they are coming with some skill sets that we historically could not do here. And we're beginning to do those things. Um, but altogether, there's a net loss of human um, human capital, financial capital, all forms of resources that we have to take seriously. You know, before Nigeria could say, oh, we've always had this problem. It's multiplying because you got to remember the focus of the Internet. Before there was, we didn't know what we did not know. So yeah. as a medical student in university, you know, I didn't know what my colleagues were doing with the same skill set that I had because I couldn't see it every day. But as time evolved, I came to Lagos, I was talking to some people, I knew some things. Now you don't have to talk to anybody. You just need to just look at your phone and you see what people with the same skill set that you have are doing all over the world. And you ask yourself, I can do better. Can I do better? Yes. Does somebody want me? Yes. So this change is not going to get any better unless, you know, the country, the policymakers, everybody comes together to create a, something that is going to work. Bring the people, the, 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 the National Medical Association, bring people to the table and let's work on something that could improve retention. Um, because we're going to lose a lot. Okay. So, that doesn't change. Yeah. So, I mean, you just talked about some policies. So what do you think are some policies that could help um, to mitigate this whole, you know, jackpot thing from our system? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that, I mean, that, that can be done. I mean, and you know, you have to address them in phases. Okay. You know, there has to be policies that are addressed at infrastructure in the country. So talking about uh, teaching hospitals, talking about our hospitals, you know, to try to improve those, um, those structures, because that has to be addressed, improving infrastructure. Hmm. There has to be health insurance policies that will be made that will make our people get good care, you know, and then there has to be human capital policies that have that involve salaries that involve um, you know giving pathways to growth that people will feel like okay yes I could have my man and then there is you know there's a lot on each of those components that we could actually do so I don't want to be short sighted and say oh yeah pay everybody better or do all that it doesn't just work in isolation you just don't take it in silence you need to look at everything all together and say okay look what would I do from a health systems perspective. And then what would I do? Um, and then the major thing that we have is um, health insurance uh, as, as a problem. I mean, many countries have this problem and then they have had this problem rather, and then they walk towards improving it, um, you, know, um, um, the, you know, towards improving how they deliver the services. And so if we can do a system where anybody in Nigeria who is sick can get significant amount of care, can get most of their care delivery, most of the people who work with these people will want to stay because I feel like I can do what I was trained to do. I can help people. That's why we got into this field. Most people didn't get into this field because, oh, I want to be um, an influencer on Instagram. But they got there because, you know, that, that cracks me you up know? a little bit. <laughs> but go on. You know, that's, that, that's everyone's goal now, right? <laughs> but seriously, but seriously um, like you said, um, you know, we have to figure out those systems. And then I think, you know, 
um, from a public post problem health policy perspective, there are multiple tools that have been recommended. There are things that we publish. We work. Um, I work closely with the group at Johns Hopkins where I did my um, my public health, and then we still talk quite regularly about stuff like this. I still was in a meeting with them on Friday, and so we have you know policy things that we'll talk about what what we could do differently. Hmm. But of course, those are focusing on the pool yeah. of what they can do. Yeah. We all just have to do our push and see how we can keep pushing people, keep keep from pushing people away because yeah. our system right now just keeps pushing everyone away. <laughs> okay, so you talked about um, health health insurance. The truth is, a lot of people cannot afford health insurance. You know, there, there might be a sex that can. Um, because I think the average one you probably hear about would be about, let's say, 17,000 naira um, per annually anyway. So I th and I think that should be like one of the cheapest ones you can find. Um, but people who cannot even afford three square meals, people who are living in shanties, how can they, you mm -hmm. know, afford this health insurance? So does it mean that yeah. their lives don't matter? Because, I mean, you would expect that the government should be able to you know, give this to people. There should be free healthcare. That's like if you don't have, yeah. if you don't have, yeah. if you don't have people in your country, you don't have a country because there's no country, yeah. there's no country yeah. to rule. So, what can we even do to ensure that people can yeah. start to afford this healthcare? Is there going to be like, you know, some form of respite, maybe like a palliative or something, or you know, subsidy? Um, I mean, not the fuel subsidy, but you know, just try to subsidize the amount um, that people have to pay for health care because health is wealth yeah. and your health yeah. matters a lot. But what can we do um, for people who cannot even afford health care right now? And even how can they go so about that's, that's, it? That's, that's exactly what you're saying. And that's exactly what we're talking about, the push factors. So the go our government policymakers um, in the federal government on the state level, you know, need to understand that, yes, we are, when you work with the formal health sector, and then we try to, which is great, it's a great way to start. When you work with the formal health sector to try to establish a health insurance program that will cover most people, that's a good way to start, but it's not the end. Like you said, 17,000 naira a year is a lot of money for people who can't eat. Some people spend their whole money just on transportation to get to work, and they have not, they haven't paid their, they haven't fed their kids, they haven't paid school fees, they haven't done anything else. Yeah. So we need to understand that health is a funda fundamental human right. And so in our system in Nigeria, we need to have a national health insurance system that not just covers the formal health sector, but for the, the formal income stream sector, but then the informal sector, which means everybody. So everyone should be able to get basic health care, basic primary health care services, secondary health care services to a certain extent. And then, you know, and we start that in phases and then we could build up with our resources, at least get the basics in place, get the secondary in place. And then we could start working on tertiary health care. Now, I know this is expensive. It's expensive to the country. It's important to understand that, yes, there will be some adjustment in priorities in our in our budget, in the way we manage our things, both statewide, um, local government-wise, and even in the federal government, definitely. But it has to be done, because if it's not done, we will, the push will continue. So yes, I definitely agree with you. Um, it's, it's really not practical to expect people to pay all of this out of um, pocket. Um, it has to be integrated in our system such that we have a national identification number. We have people who, and then being Nigerian comes with this level of um, perks. And then afterwards, you know, maybe you might need a little extra as a copay, you know, some a little extra out of pocket, which is a little less, but you can get care and you would not die because you don't have uh, any health care. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. But I wanted to add, just ask one more question which goes off tangent a little bit it's still in regards to this but um last year the house of Re representatives passed a bill um saying that you know all of the medical practitioners have to um, they are mandated to stay in Nigeria and practice for five years before they can move abroad. Now, you talked about some push factors where you said um, no adequate resources, uh, no payment of salary, devaluation of the Naira. But do you think that's also another push factor? Because you are, you're telling me that 
even when I'm done studying, you're not going to give me the resources that I need. You're not going to pay me my salary. Um, living in Nigeria is, you know, I don't, I don't even know the word to use, but all of these factors, and then you're still telling me that I'm mandated to stay here and I can't leave. Isn't that even another push factor that would make people to say, you know what, I don't even want to be here at all and I'm just going to leave. Maybe I would not even study here. So that even still affects our revenue when it comes to um, the money that we're supposed to make from education because people would want to move over to other countries to study and so that way they can move abroad. So is that a push factor for you as well? No, I mean, I think you know, those are definitely push factors, um, you know, because the... And, and, and then when policymakers make decisions, I think it's always great to bring all stakeholders to the table yeah. before those discussions are concluded. Because, you know, the National Medical Association, you know, obviously has an interest in keeping things, keeping doctors in place. Um, so we have interest in keeping things, improving our health system locally. So being able to work with um, the policymakers towards something that is sustainable, not just bringing some arbitrary numbers saying you have to stay five years, because then it seems like, oh yeah, you're going to be trapped for yeah. five years. We're not going to give you any resources. We're going to be frustrated and you're going to be trapped for five years. As opposed to, okay, well, when you're going into school, we're going to create this process where you're going to get funding. So when you go to school, you're, going to, you're not going to be begging for money to feed your to eat or to pay your school fees or to do all of this. We're going to have that incorporated in your training such that you won't have to get, um, you know, you won't have to take so many, um, you don't have to deal with so much yeah. to deal to, to again for your education. And then, you know, maybe that comes with a commitment for two years. Maybe that comes with something else where you would have, if you choose to, you could sign that, but then you know that you get some funding in, adva in, in advance for that purpose. But, you know, if you don't give them anything, or you say, well, you know, the assumption is you're in Nigeria, you have this. And so you now have to stay here for five years. It becomes a trap. So, you know, working together with our key stakeholders and then saying, okay, look, this is something that we can together create a plan for, I think would be ideal. Um, but, and then, you know, and then there are multiple ideas that have been proposed and together we can come up with something that works. But I think we just have to just take it one step at a time. Oh, fantastic. But so final words, I'm just going to ask how, you know, what are ways you think we can start to attract and retain um, our skilled workers? So we're not just in the same position whereby people study, they practice for maybe a year or two, and then they move abroad and all of these other countries are benefiting. And meanwhile, we are at the receiving end. So what are some, um, you know, some things you just want to highlight before we wrap it up? Okay, so first thing I'll highlight is we need, and I'm not, because I know that policymakers are listening to this, and that's why I focus on this. Yeah. We need to have a health insurance system for management, of the, uh, for management of our population. The next thing I would say is that for the people that we have on ground right now, let's improve our retention packages. Let's improve retention packages that will make people want to stay. So, well, look, if you stay in the country for five years and you walk in the in this kind of a hospital, I mean, if you start from the government perspective, you work in a government hospital for five years, this is what you get every year for retaining, for staying, and make it viable. So it's something that, okay, yeah, it's, it's valuable. I want to stay because I want to get this. Every more Fortune 500 company, every large institution that actually has great work cultures, have retention problem and structure. So there has to be a way of creating that. So whether it's money, whether it's like we said, we start with the health insurance first because that is what makes people have joy from doing what they do. If you go, go to work every day and then people die and you know you could have helped them but you didn't do anything, you know, um, then, you know, you would um, not be able to do your best. You would yeah. not be able to bring money to your You'd best. You'd be demotivated. So Yes, you would not be motivated. And then, obviously, we want to also create a system where people can come back and want to do stuff. So create those facilities. You know, we could, there, there, there are a lot of people. There's the Association of Nigerian Physicians in America, ANPA, and then I'm sure they have a lot of organizations also across the world of people who want to come back and help. And then most of the time, coming back to help is like, you know, we want, we feel like we've, we, we are, we are Nigerians, we love Nigeria, we want to give you back to that country. So creating that avenue also where you could get a lot from 
um, diaspora physicians and other staff, other, other 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 practitioners coming back in to help. And then once they do that, you know, the system gets strengthened, and some people might be more inclined to stay. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much. I think that's a good note to leave it. We want to say thank you um, for joining us and just you know shedding more light on this. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much. Enjoy Have a nice day. You too. Enjoy the rest Bye. of your day. All right, we've been speaking to Dr. Sheyi Bolon Ruduro. He's an interventional cardiologist in over Heart and Vascular Institute um, from Virginia, USA. And we're talking about the brain drain in our system and how over 500 um, medical practitioners, how over 500 workers have left the National Hospital in two years. Wind. The optimist expects it to change and the realist adjusts the sales and that is by William Arthur Ward. He is, um, or rather he was an American motivational writer. And so what we're just telling you today is that you should stop complaining. Stop being a pessimist that's complaining about the wind. Make sure that you are an optimist who knows that it will change and you are also a realist that adjusts the sales. So whatever life throws at you, do not complain about it. You can feel some type of way, but do not just stay there complaining and not doing anything about it. Instead, you should start to adjust the, sale, the sales of it. Um, you have to start to develop yourself, anything that can take you into that place um, that you aspire to be, into that person that you aspire to be. And so that's where we'll wrap it up on the program today. You've been watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Vrume Paul and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.